Good afternoon, fellow Zimbabweans. Welcome to News by Breaking Vet. Today's topic is something that is always used by our politicians to try and explain their lack of delivery. Sanctions. If we take a walk in Zimbabwe today, on the roads, in the schools, the hospitals, everything is in quite a sad state of disrepair. When we ask why they are not being fixed, normally the answer is because of sanctions. So what really are these sanctions? Well, in 2003, the USA imposed sanctions on 113 individuals and 70 of their companies. However, between 2003 and 2015, the USA and Zim had very healthy trade relations to the tune of over 120 million US dollars per year. Funny enough, with the trade balance almost always favoring Zimbabwe. So where's those sanctions that they keep talking about? Since 2001 till 2015, the USA donates over $160 million per year in various aid, expecting nothing in return. Again, is that a country under sanctions? In 2002, the European Union also introduced sanctions on about 100 individuals and companies. In 2015, only three people remained on that list. However, during that whole time, the EU and the UK continued to donate over 200 million US dollars per year for various upliftment projects in Zimbabwe. Again, does that sound like a country under sanctions? What is quite interesting is that when things are not done, the excuse normally is because of the sanctions. However, have you ever asked yourself how the government is still able to import fancy cars manufactured in the very countries imposing these so-called sanctions? For example, September 2013, $20 million spent on Mercs, Land Rovers and Toyotas for MPs. In April 2015, $2 million spent on seven Range Rover Vogue SE for seven ministers. One wonders what happened to those sanctions when those cars were imported. There is also a dairy farm in Zim said to have the best automated system in Africa. One wonders how that equipment snuck past those sanctions. There's an individual whose namesake is nearly the same as, as my faithful assistant Fidza there, who manages to import a number of luxury vehicles. One in particular going for over 400,000 US dollars. And yet we are told that we are under sanctions. Seeing as we are speaking of sanctions and their effect, we thought it would be good to get opinions from countries who are either still under sanctions or who were under sanctions. And so we sent Fidza to go and look for a few of these individuals and this is what they had to say. Iranian citizen Muhammad Ali he said that Iran wasn't allowed to buy or sell anything, a total trade embargo, and yet they managed to build a nuclear bomb. Three of them. When we mentioned that Zim couldn't even repair potholes and robots, he was left quite speechless. Cuban citizen Ernesto Santos. He said his little island of a country was totally surrounded by U.S. warships. Nothing in, nothing out. And still, they managed to provide free health care for every citizen and free schooling up to and including university for every child. However, in Zim, government can't even print textbooks in a country full of trees. But the education minister is driven around 
in one of those murks that we spoke of earlier. Libyan citizen Mustafa Abdu says that Gaddafi was hunted like an animal when under sanctions and yet electricity and water was always available and it was for free. When we told him that Zim government can't even repair blocked sewer pipes in Mfakosi, he said he can't believe that and started to actually cry with laughter. Seeing as we are now approaching the end of the year, we know it's that time where our president is going on holiday. We as the people of Zimbabwe would kindly ask him when he's coming back to please leave behind some of the clothes and presents and rather put on a few water pumps that are needed at Morton Jeffrey Waterworks. We at Brett Mouvet News have been reliably informed that such pumps are available in Malaysia. And that brings us an end to this episode of Brett Mouvet News. If you like what I say, you like the way I say it, then please feel free to like my page, or Brett Mouvet Facebook page, and uh, let's discuss how we can get Zimbabwe working again. Thank you.